while we knew that there would be some glitches and actually said publicly uh, that we expected some problems, we did not know uh, until the problems manifested themselves uh, after the launch that they would be as significant as they have turned out to be. Well, there is White House Press Secretary Jay Carney trying to explain some of the early glitches during the Obamacare rollout, but now, several months later, there are new concerns about the president's signature health care law. According to printed reports, the new insurance marketplaces appear to be making little headway to help sign up the uninsured. Hello and welcome back to America's program. I'm John Bachman. And I'm J.D. Hayworth. And we are so pleased, John, to be joined on America's Forum this hour by Newsmax TV correspondent Morgan Thompson. Morgan, we are glad to have you here on America's Forum. And we have been talking about Obamacare and, dare we call them, the ills affecting that program. <laughs> Thank you, J.D. Well, yes, we have. And it was the central goal of Obamacare, getting health insurance to those who had previously been uninsured. But according to a couple of surveys, this is not what is happening. There have been three major changes in three weeks. This week, administration officials said that people could keep for three years health benefits with plans that do not meet the law standards. Last week, they said the government would pay for people in certain states to collect federal subsidies for insurance policies outside the exchanges. Two weeks before that, they gave medium-sized and large employers two additional years before they must offer coverage to their full-time workers. Now, according to a variety of people, the changes are in response to consumer hesitancy and political opposition. The rule changes have postponed or changed major aspects of the law. Well. Wow. This, this, this paint by numbers mm -hmm. change, change the law as you go. And, and of course, earlier this week, we just heard another change mm -hmm. being proposed by the president. I, is this ju just going to continue ad infinitum? You know, I think it is. And the sign-up period is over in three weeks. So I have a feeling we'll be seeing yet another change. Most likely, they're going to extend it because they have not received the people signing up the way they expected. Now, I know that uh, having served 12 years in Congress, my mm -hmm. mathematical skills are a little suspect, <laughs> but let's see, over 300 million Americans and thus far only 4 million people signing up? You know, that's true. And well, the, the interesting thing is they can't really quantify. There is no way to measure who really is signing up. And the really interesting thing is the goal, the main goal of Obamacare is to sign up the young and healthy because that's going to help defray costs for the elderly and sick. And that is overwhelmingly not happening. The least percentage of people are the young and the uninsured. So I'm wondering, are we going to keep seeing premiums go up? Well, regardless of someone's philosophy about health care and government involvement, <laughs> there's just a situation demographically when you're young and healthy, you're not thinking about health care insurance. Exactly. Until marriage and family, unless in my case, it was my mom years ago. Make sure you have your insurance. Well, exactly. And part of it as well is it's the lower income. They maybe don't have access. They don't have the knowledge. These are the people that it was designed for, and these are the people that are not signing up for it. Well, the president, guys, recently, just uh, yesterday, made a, a plea to Latino and Hispanic Americans to sign up for the health care coverage. Uh, don't know specifically why he did that, uh, but, you know, we're looking at the demographics and the people that, ne that are needed. Obviously, he's trying to get more people uh, who are not currently insured to sign up for health care. But is there any proof that this particular demographic, the Latinos that he's reaching out to now, is going to help with those enrollment numbers? Well, you know what's curious? You think back to a State of the Union message a few years ago where Congressman Joe Wilson of South Carolina very vociferously objected, saying it was a lie when the president said that illegals would not be covered. Well, now we see that the White House is moving in that direction. And of course, the cauldron, the epicenter for mm -hmm. all this debate is California. Let's go now to Sacramento, to State Senator Ted Gaines, who in the California legislature is not only fighting what has happened with the exchanges, but also has gone to court. Senator Gates, give us an update on California's Obamacare exchanges. Thank you, J.D. Uh, appreciate the opportunity. Uh, we filed lawsuit uh, against the Covered California, which is the implementation of the Affordable Care Act in uh, California. We feel that they took a unilateral decision to cancel 900,000 individuals' coverage. 
Uh, the second phase of this, of course, is the implementation of businesses, another up to 9 million uh, individuals affected uh, by that. It is not working. It's a mistake. There are other ways to look at reforms for health care, and I don't want big government telling us what we ought to be doing with our lives. So now you guys are going to court. Do you expect to have success there? Because given the decisive Democrat advantages in the state assembly, I would think that politically this is an uphill battle for you, Ted. Well, we thought the, the court might be an opportunity where, uh, given a good judge, you can take a look at uh, the Affordable Care Act and how it was written. And if you take a look at the decision made by Covered California not to extend coverage for a year for individuals, we felt that they did not have the authority to do so. The second element of this uh, is the financial perspective. We don't think that they have figured out how this is going to be funded. Uh, Covered California is projecting a $78 million deficit in budget year 2015-16. Tell us how we're going to make up that difference. Are you going to increase our taxes? Are you going to increase policy fees? Are you increasing premiums? And people aren't signing up in the numbers that they anticipated. I think we had a better system before we even entered into the Affordable Care Act. We can look at some reforms. I'm open to that. But we don't have to have a mandate. We don't need big government creating another bureaucracy. So we're saying this is a policy that is evolving, as we're saying the laws keep changing week by week. We keep getting new revisions. I mean, don't you think that might be covered? You keep talking about revisions. Perhaps this will work itself out. Well, I, I think we have to go back to square one and figure out what, what do we need? What, what are the elements of health care where we have problems? I, I think uh, pre-existing conditions is one area, but we can do that in the private sector. We can set up a, a special pool. It might have to be subsidized, but I think everybody that wants coverage ought to have the opportunity to buy coverage, regardless of whether you've had cancer in your past or not. Uh, when I take a look at uh, individuals, I met a gentleman down in L.A., who makes $41,000 a year. He had a, a, an individual plan. He was paying $157 a month. That plan got canceled. He had to go into the ACA. The quoted premium was $300 a month. So he couldn't afford it. Now he's without care. So in your opinion, where do we go wrong? Do we just rush into Obamacare too quickly without research? Or, I mean, where do we go wrong with all of this? I, I think it's a sign of uh, government bureaucrats who have never seen how the private sector operates trying to implement something within a marketplace, mm -hmm. and it just doesn't work. If, if you want to make uh, changes, let's take a look at making changes within the framework of the private market. And we know the private market is more efficient than government. Mm -hmm. I've been in an elective office for 12 years. I've seen the waste. and. Uh, the, it just isn't the right uh, solution. The solution is working with the private sector and figuring out how to solve the challenges that lie ahead for health care. Ted, and we very much am, making adjustments here and there. We'll have to leave it there, State Senator Ted Gaines. We want to thank you very much. And Morgan, we're very pleased to have you, and we know you're going to stay with us for the next portion of the program. Uh, in the meantime, your thank chance you. to reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you via social media. Tweet us your questions at Newsmax TV, hashtag America's Forum. Visit us at Facebook.com backslash newscast and send your email comments to connect at NewsmaxTV.com.